most churches talk about the past and look ahead to the return of Jesus. But what if a church started at the end and looked back? And what if this church was available not just to one community, but the whole world? Are you discouraged because churches neglect to teach and prepare for the end times, the restoration of Israel, the reality of Islam, and persecution? Are you currently seeking a church that embraces those concerns? Would you like to be a part of something that is spiritually groundbreaking and world-changing? We are the End Time Church, a church with the end in mind. Join us now at endtime.church. And you are joining us now at endtime.church. Uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, that is Pastor Jake McCandless. I think he's down oh, there. Here. He's here. down there for me. Uh, our awesome worship leader, Taryn. Hi, say hi. And she'll hi. Be, yeah, she'll be um, harmonizing with herself here in a few minutes, uh, leading us in worship, which I totally dig. And we have you, of course, along for the ride tonight. Welcome, one and all. If you are joining us for the first time, we love you. We are fist bumping you. We are hugging you, all kinds of appropriate things. Um, for the for first time, hopefully, of many, right? So continue to share the uh, where you're at, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook or uh, hopefully on our website. And if you're at the site, endtime.church, there's a nice little form you can fill out to say you were here. Hit that. It's called contact form, I believe, or prayer. Prayer. Uh, whatever you want to put in there is fine. Just say you were here, who you are, where you're from, etc. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, of course, you can chat away. Just create any name you want. Uh, Pastor Jake, by the way, usually goes by the name of what? What are you in the oh, chat? In the, in the chat? Yeah, yeah, DJ Jazzy Jake. D- uh, <laughs> burning, turning the hits out to you. Yeah, no, I just, <laughs> this was one day. I just did it, man. It's a, it's a sticking so. Something. You know, I mean, you get called to something by God, and then there's the job that you really want. That's right. That's right. No, I don't think I ever wanted. To, well, I'd be, yeah, DJ would be cool, but yeah. well, it sounds like you got the whole spiel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, it, it it goes back from uh, uh, early on, right? Uh, college days, I was doing uh, this eva- youth evangelism team, and uh, we had a comedian, and me and him would do this radio skit deal. And so in the skit, I was DJ Jazzy Jake, so I've not lived that down. So uh going to bring that out some. It's cool, you know. Oh, you're welcome. He's always cooler than a pastor, right? I'm just trying to help you out. Well, at least you know what that uh, DJ does. <laughs> right, right, right. Most times, the pastor, what? Yeah. yeah. I'm a priest. How about that one? Okay, well, I, sure. I kind well, of blew my cover now, so I'm going to have to use something else tonight. Uh, well, you're blowing your own cover, man. You're you're a lot uh, – there's a lot less of you than there used to be, so. It's more background. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, we're going to point that out. Everyone congratulate Pastor Jake on getting healthy. It's awesome. Well, yeah, God. don't. but now you got to hold me to that now, you know. I mean, don't, oh, we don't could. tell anybody. Oh, can can we if we ever get together again in person, which who knows anymore? Uh, but can we still go to uh, what was that? Uh, where did we go? We went to a bunch of places. A Cracker Barrel, yeah, at, like, Cracker Barrel, go to the south, right? Yeah, uh, I got one of them here. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to go south. Yeah, anyway. so, hey, we should have done better than that, right? Down home, yeah, comfort food. Yeah, anyway. Hey, no, but they they have you can make healthy choices at, at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you can. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah. You can? Okay. And you can rock it off on the front porch in your rock chair. <laughs> well, yeah, they're not now. It's, uh, you know, they're like upside down or something now, so you can't sit on them for COVID, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. You're yeah, wrapping with plastic. They change we're having way too much first. fun. Y'all stop it right now. Okay? Stop it. Just stop. Uh, we're at church. No, so, hey, when you were here, we had, Daniel Second was here, and we, so we're, like, you know, naming the places that are, like, you know, cool, local, uh, yeah. where to go to. Where do you want to go, Daniel? And, and uh, I feel, it's like I've heard of this mystical place called Cracker Barrel. Really? Closed it down. We got wild in Arkansas. We closed it down. <laughs> it was crazy, dude. Wild times, yeah. I got pictures. <laughs> All right. Uh, praise the Lord. So tonight you're probably tuning in to hear something different, which is about elections and God and, and leadership and what does the Bible actually like say about these things. And we're, I'm more than ready to help you with that. And Jake is, I'm sure, has thoughts as well. Uh, and we do want to. Uh, I will let you take it. it we, we have well, comments waiting on you right now. So somebody well, stepped in it tonight. So uh, I, oh, I, I stepped gonna, in it, brother. 
sit back and let you have some fun tonight. I stepped in it all day, <laughs> multiple times. But that's yeah. cool. That's cool. All I, yeah, so, I know the scripture so says there cleansed. Wait, has there been an election? What? <laughs> I don't know. Something. He got, he got everybody. It's all. I don't think it's. <laughs> yeah, it stirred something up. I don't think it's done yet. I think we had one last week. I don't know if it's finished. Yeah, you know, it's, it's still still in. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so just one so more thing. You, you step in it tonight, which. Yes, please. Which I, I do think it's a. I, I think one thing it's really difficult for us to, to understand how democracy fits in with God, God's word. I think that's a very confusing uh, factor. And I think a lot of it's gotten wrong in how it's expressed for sure. You know, it's a lot easier when you had a, just this, this King you had no control over ruling over you. It's, it's pretty easy to understand how that works, you know, and be frustrated with that. But when you have a, a hand in the process, how to balance the Lord's work, your role in that. Yeah. So I'm excited about tonight before we step in it. I mean, you had a big, big weekend, uh, several from end time church involved in that. Our friend Chadwick Harvey, Daniel Seckham, others, yourself. Tell us a bit about that for the, for us who missed out. Well, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, it was called the Gospel of the Kingdom to Muslims. Uh, it was an online conference. Uh, Al Fadi really led on that. And yeah, he and I have been talking forever. It seems like it's about a year, I guess. <clears throat> um, how do we do this? And, and what does it look like? And what to use? And how is it effective? And who do we reach out to? How do we vet for it? You know, there's all kinds of questions. Anyway, um, it went off very, very well. Um, we had some of you were there, uh, Taryn, I know, and several of you who are watching now were. So thank you. Bless you for, for that. Um, Al was blessed by you. And, uh, it, it really was a tremendous time. We had three different basically tacks, uh, to get to that, um, reality of the gospel, uh, to the Muslim people. Um, you know, Al, of course, is from Saudi Arabia, so he's an Arab. And we had two other Saudi Arabian believers, converts, uh, on as well on that first session on Friday. And that was just phenomenal to wow. just be in the room, so to speak, um, yeah. with those guys. It's just a tremendous witness. Um, and then the second part, we had Jay Smith and David Wood, which, boy, I mean, if you guys, I'm sure, are fans of at least one of those guys. And for my money, there is no, you cannot get better teachers than those guys. I, I mean, I'm a, the biggest Jay Smith fanboy there is probably, but um, he, just tremendous, tremendous teaching about, you know, just the nuts and bolts and where Islam came from and the Quran and the, and the apologetics to it and defending our faith and all that whole angle, you know. Tremendous uh, sessions, and then we ended up with again, like you said, myself and Chad Harvey and Daniel Seckham, uh, and Al just kind of kicked her around the the prophetic, the prophecy, you know, the things to come that maybe uh, Islam will be involved in and the the Arab nations, etc. So <clears throat> I thought it was awesome. It was it was very very good and entertaining, even just to watch uh, and then to participate. Obviously, was a blessing was in that. So I want to thank all of you who did. No, it was great. Like seriously, we were all fired up in the comments the whole weekend. Making new friends, learning stuff. How cool! Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, hopefully, maybe one or two will check in this out tonight. Uh, I did kind of drop a little hint about you know that we meet actually online, and that might be good for folks who are uh, kind of underground in their faith, or maybe they don't know any other believers. So, bless you if you're here for that, and uh, we love you no matter what. And so, folks, again, check out if you're on the site, please. If you're not here, you can go there. Go to endtime.church, fill in a chat name for yourself, uh, go to town there, fill out the uh, contact form where it says prayer. There's one that says playlist, which is all our previous um, session for, boy, going back a couple of months now. So it's really nice and convenient. And if you're led to give, please, we do depend on that. We really do. Uh, it's only by you guys that we're here to survive. So hit, hit give now and uh, whatever is on your heart to do, please do that. Uh, and that's, I think that's all I've, wait, no, get the app. What am I talking about? I was going to fire myself right there. Gotta get, gotta get the app, please. It's awesome. Uh, it's uh, lively. It's really lively. We've got folks from everywhere just chiming in and praying and having meetings and, and ministries and, uh, you name it. It's on there and that's the intent of it, you know, just get 24 seven. You don't have to be on a Monday night with us now. You'll be anytime, any day, right? Just get in there, mix it up and be the body, uh, anywhere, anytime, Spanish language stuff, all kinds of good stuff is happening and more, hopefully very, very soon, uh, to have more intimate, uh, group expression, uh, of this, uh, end time church thing as well. So that's all I've got, Pastor Jake. 
do you have anything else, or you want to pray us into some worship tonight? I want to pray us into some worship. I do want to mention, we're talking about the election, and I have a devotional book coming out. I think next week it's going to be available for pre-order. It's not due to release till March, but we're, we've uh, because it's just so fitting of, of the times we're in. started a year and a half ago uh, with this. It walks through all the time that God's people were under national distress. Uh, you know, we go through a week in Egypt with Israel and Egypt, uh, under Syria, so on, uh, Babylon, Persia, all that, and uh, bring that into a 40-day devotional. Super, super excited about that. So watch for that uh, called uh, Four Uncertain Times. Uh, it just, you know, a time that we need it. And we're going to be talking about that tonight. So, but so glad that you're here. Uh, just so glad what's, I mean, what happened this weekend, that conference still comes on, on the heels of what we've been able to do at End Time Church. And so you've been a big part of making that, that happen and, uh, keep it up. Let's pray and let's get into worship tonight. Father, I thank you so much for those who are tuning in now, tuning in later. Father, I thank you for this end time church family. Father, we love you. Uh, tonight we pray that we can just gather to your throne. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I had a lot of, um, very emotional times this week, as I'm sure many of us have. And, um, going to the conference and everything with the election and craziness and, um, other things with our friends in ministry. So I recorded this worship set yesterday in a state of great emotion, two tracks. Um, I could barely sing because I was so emotional and I decided to keep it because um, I thought it was worship. <laughs> and I was thinking of all of you. So I love you guys. I
Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Taryn. All right, Pastor Jake, let's start this thing <laughs> the right way. Yeah, let's start with prayer. And uh, Father, I thank you again that we can gather. I thank you for this opportunity to worship. Father, I pray that you guide uh, what is said here tonight. Uh, Lord, you uh, help us discern. And Lord, help us understand the times that we're living in. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. My friends, Taryn, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Pastor Jake. Okay. Um, I approach this as something that I was challenged with myself by someone the other day on Facebook, probably. Who knows? Um, but it got me to thinking – Boy, we really should dive into this because it's really applicable right this second. As I share my screen with you. Um, yeah, and that is elections. Now, we know that God, we should know, that God is a God of election, right? He elects who he will. And obviously, uh, originally, and that still, excuse me, still applies to his people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the people known as Israel, are his election. 
And then as believers, there are various admonitions, right, to make our calling and election sure and the elect of God. And there's kind of some, you know, well, that kind of means Christians if we're chosen by God. Okay, yeah. So God elects people, no doubt, by his uh, sovereignty, right? He's in total control of that. Um, b- but then uh, when we come especially in these democracies that many of us live in, in the Western nations, especially the United States, uh, this question comes up of electing our leaders and is God or to what extent is God involved in this? And so we're going to take a look at a uh, verse that Joey cited, which is Daniel 2.21. And I really just want to approach this as a base-level Bible study, not even a study, just a mini-examination of of what Daniel is talking about with this, because we have, of course, a very famous uh, situation, obviously, in the prophet Daniel. And we should know his story, right? He's taken from... Judea from Israel as a young man. We're not sure exactly how old he was, but not, not very old. Uh, as one of the, you know, premier minds and was raised up in the Chaldean, uh, system, education and taught or wanted to be taught magic and all these things that they got going on. But he would refuse, obviously, to, uh, bow to anyone or anything other than the God of Israel, him and his buddies. So obviously that's a good example for us. And then it turns out that he can interpret dreams and it's no big surprise because God is telling Daniel what the dreams are, right? It's not up for debate or anything. He just, this is just one of the ways God talks to Daniel and deals with him. And so this is where this comes from. So let's take a look at it. And the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night. This is after, of course, King Nebuchadnezzar has his dream and he's very troubled because he knows it was bad or, or serious, but he can't remember what it is. And none of his astrologers or, you know, what have you, um, spiritual advisors, uh, can tell him what it was. Well, he's like, well, what good are y'all? Tell me, get me somebody who can tell me. Uh, so then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night and Daniel Bless the God of heaven. Daniel answered, Blessed be the name of the of God forever and ever for wisdom and power belong to him. It is he who changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and establishes kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge, greater knowledge, to those who have understanding. So the challenge that I was presented with was regarding our election, right? That we just had in America. And like I was joking with Pastor Jake earlier tonight, it seems, I thought we had it last week, but it maybe it's not over. And I'm not going to get into any of that other than um, to say that I made the point of saying we should examine ourselves and our conscience and pray about how we vote and if we vote. And then after the election day itself, there was a um, a pastor friend of mine out in Michigan. I got the quote right here. Bear with me a second. Um, who put something very, very profound, and it was completely tracking – uh, with what I was feeling and discerning about the attitude in the church globally, okay, no matter which side of politics you're on. And yes, there are Christians who are on the left and don't see a problem with that, okay? So I know those of us on the right tend to think, well, those must be all non-believers and heretics, but they're not. Let me get the quote. Here it is. 
his point was this. You can't have God be sovereign and, at the same time, be thwarted by crafty people. In other words, there's a lot of accusation right now about the election results being tampered with or some kind of unfairness or treachery, craftiness, right, trying to manipulate the results. That what you saw this past few days isn't actually correct or there's cheating involved or some illegality. So this other brother's point was you can't have a sovereign God who can be thwarted by people. In other words, if he's in control, what he says will happen. So either it's that, or you can be your plan can be all messed up by craftiness. Right? Either God put your man in the office for this particular time in history, or he didn't. If he did, then you don't need to worry about voter fraud or any of that. You don't have to worry about if it's happening. God will sovereignly put down a king or put him in place. As most people say, this is what Daniel's talking about. If God is God, he will do it. Trump can't stop it. Biden can't stop it. Media can't stop it. God will just do the miracle of putting the man there. Right? If he didn't put the man in place... In other words, if he's not directly doing it, but it's on you as a voter to fight for God so God doesn't lose, then you really don't serve the God that sovereignly and miraculously put the man in place. You have to pick one. Either he's just going to do it or he needs your help to do it. That makes sense to me. And one other comment that he makes that I don't, really don't want to address tonight, but maybe I should, the church is divided in half, which is what I was just saying. It isn't mostly conservative or liberal. It's mostly confused. Many people in the church saw President Obama as God's man. Did you know that? Some of you did know that. Most of you maybe didn't. If you didn't know that, this is my buddy talking, if you didn't know that, it's because you don't care about the whole church. And many in the church see President Trump now as God's man. And if you don't care about that, then you don't care about the whole church. His point is ends by saying, neither is God's man. Trump, Biden, neither one. The Father has already picked one to rule and reign forever, and his name is Jesus. Every other crown will be cast at his feet. Okay, so that was a comment that I shared. I thought it was quality. It makes you think. Good stuff. Uh, and then one of my uh, Facebook friends replied with, don't you believe God raises up rulers or leaders was the comment. Doesn't God raise up leaders? Don't you believe that? In other words, putting it on me, don't I believe God raises up leaders? Well, that's silly. Of, of course he does. Leaders in the church, definitely. Uh, but this is a little different, right? This is, We're talking about leading a nation. And how does that work exactly when, as Pastor Jake said in the beginning, we're not talking about a king that God just picks. We're talking about an election where you have a vote. So tonight, I just want to real quickly just break it down to the brass tacks of any any verse in the Bible, any idea that you're presented with. Number one, be a Berean. Right? Acts 17.11. Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they had received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true, or put in Chris Manti, or who, Jake McCandless, or whomever, said was true, right? We expect that. I want that. I need that. I need to do it myself. I need you to do that to hold people accountable, right? We're interested in the word of God, after all. That's the point. And that goes along with 2 Timothy 2.15, rightly divide, right? Be diligent to present yourself approved 
to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, but accurately handling or rightly dividing the word of truth. And thy word is truth, right? We know that. I'm talking about the scriptures. So basically, just don't ever stop doing that. Be a Berean, rightly divide, you know, handle it accurately. Be diligent as a workman to figure things out. Okay, so here's the, the key verse about all this. He says, he removes kings and establishes kings. He raises them up and pulls them down. Just in that one sentence, I have three questions. Trying to be a Berean, trying to be a workman. Dividing this correctly. What does it mean to remove or establish a king? Does that include elections? Number two, what exactly is a king? When it says remove kings and establishes kings, it says kings for a reason, I figure. Um, does that include a president that is technically not a king? In fact, in American um, version of your chief executive is actually quite weak when compared to leaders throughout history. Very weak. And in terms of power that they wield. And number three, where are these kingdoms when it says he removes and establishes kings? Is he talking about what nation? Does it can include the USA? So we're talking about elections, a president, and USA, right? I mean, that's what we're asking about right now. Generally, yes, but specifically, we're talking about who is God's man. Does does God have a preference, or did he choose? Is he just a preference, or is he actually choosing someone? That, to me, is a difference. So when you re remove or establish, can you include elections in that? We're going to get to that later, I guess. And then what is a king? And where are these kingdoms? So let's take the last one first. I All I have to do is continue to read in Daniel 2, a couple of verses down, right? With 2.21, there. We're presented with the issue. And then um, I only have to go down to 2.39 to see this. And Daniel's explaining the dream to King Nebuchadnezzar. But after you shall arise... Another kingdom inferior to yours, then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. All the earth? Question mark. Uh, I don't really, it doesn't really matter what you believe this statue and the metals, etc., what kingdom it represents, whether it is ancient or modern or end times or whatever. We know this kingdom refers to, at least in some way, the, uh, what we call Greek or Yavon kingdom, right? The bronze, the one that came after the Persians. So that's the point of the dream. It's telling you kingdoms to come in the future, right? Okay, we get that. Which shall rule over the whole earth. What Wait, did the Greek, Alexander the Great, let's just put him in there. Say the past. Say it means the past to us. Did that control the whole, did Alexander the Great rule the whole earth? Because that's what it says. So the point is, let's let's keep that in mind when we're looking at 221, talking about raising up kings. And what kingdoms are we talking about exactly? Let's go to Daniel 4. Nebuchadnezzar, he addresses the king, another dream, right? To Nebuchadnezzar the king, to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Is Nebuchadnezzar the king of all the earth? His kingdom was smaller than Alexander's, probably half only as big. In terms of land area and number of people under his control? It did not control the whole earth. And that, that's what it says. Daniel 4.11, again, the tree grew, became strong. Its height reached to the heavens. This is the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. And it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. 
And again, verse 22, it is you, O king, who have become great and grown strong. Your greatness has increased and it reaches to heaven. And your dominion, your kingdom, reaches to the ends of the earth. Ends of all the earth, dwell all the earth, shall rule over all the earth. So again, as as a Berean, as someone who's trying to rightly divide this thing, I'm looking at it, boy, maybe we just better stop assuming we think, you know, that it applies to us. Because in the biblical sense, the biblical world, the scriptural world, the kingdoms of the world, you know, in this, especially in Daniel, just keep it in Daniel. Keep Daniel and Daniel. Um, it seems to be very limited. What is a king? We have, I didn't get a chance to put all this in, but in the Old Testament, it's pretty clear whether it's Israel or other nations, King Nebuchadnezzar, King Cyrus, obviously David and Solomon and Saul, but even the king of Syria, right? Whether it be Samuel, whether it be Elijah or whomever, you would go on an, if it was God, the God of Israel's decision on who the king would be, you had to take a prophet, had to go and anoint them. Physically. You're the king. Dave, hey David. Yeah, go to Jesse's sons. Now that's not him. That's not him. That's him. That's him. Pour it on him. Okie dokie. God says it's you, little Davy. Right? Not big old Saul anymore. But that's how Saul became the king, right? God said, go to him and anoint him. God told the prophet, the prophet did it. There was no election. It was the election of one. Okay. Done deal. No controversy. God doesn't need no help. God doesn't need uh, a, an electoral college. He has his man on the earth is the prophet. And he anoints the king to rule over the people. That's how it works. Now you could get even into more of the, you know, theologically. Well, did he really, did he really anoint King Nebuchadnezzar? I, to, to me, it just looks like he happened to be there. It's not like he called him from birth to, to, uh, destroy God's temple and to talk to Daniel and get his dreams interpreted. Does it? Or Cyrus or the other Persian kings that happened in the book of Daniel. Or the Assyrian kings. You name it, right? It just seems to be like there's different methods, okay? And just because a country has a leader doesn't mean God picked him. Did he pick Hitler? Was that God's man? Because he won an election. Or did he get stolen? That was, was that election stolen by the devil? Or maybe... God wasn't in it at all. That doesn't mean he doesn't raise up kings. Doesn't mean he doesn't mean he doesn't uh, raise up leaders. But we're in, you know, the church is perfectly capable. You're you're more important as a as a believer in in God's kingdom, in the church kingdom, more important than the president or any king. Romans 13, right? That's the old government scripture. Everyone goes to that eventually. Well, I'm looking at it. It says all government is from God, if you like him or not. Doesn't matter if you voted for him. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, granted by his permission and sanction. So says the Amplified. A little helpful. And those which exist have been put in place by God. Therefore, who, whoever resists governmental authority resists the ordinance, the rules of God. And those who have resisted it will bring judgment from the civil side, the civil penalty from that government on themselves. So you know if you resist your government, they're going to come after you. Because God ordained them to be there. Does that mean he likes it? Does that mean you need to like it? 
does that mean you need to support it? I mean, like, it just it's there. God has set things up to be there. Is it so specific? Now, look, I'm thinking of the Roman Empire. When Paul wrote this, he was under the Roman emperors. Um, and obviously, you can apply this to wherever, but the Roman emperors kind of ran the gamut, right? There was Julius Caesar. There was Caligula. Nero. Nero wasn't very nice to the Christians. But then, not too long after, was a guy who actually converted to Christianity, Constantine. <laughs> so that kind of ran the gamut, right? You can't just say a Roman emperor is bad or is good. They sometimes God just set up the Roman Empire, didn't he? And sometimes they changed. And they elected their Caesars, right? The Senate. That was a precursor to what we have. Just something to think about and pray over. So to me, just looking at this one verse in these different ways, elections mean God is living it to us. Obviously, that's the self-evident truth. That's what an election means. It means that the citizens of the country get to pick the leader. doesn't make us God. doesn't mean whoever wins is God's man. Now, see, th there is no God's man or party. Even though you just, I, I, as an individual human being and a uh, person with a mind, I can see, well, Seems like one party is not so into God's word and uh, is not really interested in righteousness and not, you know, killing babies and stuff is bad, <laughs> you know, and, and, and redefining marriage is bad and, um, they're not really interested in scriptural things and kind of make fun of the Bible sometimes and, and Bible believers. Yeah. I see that. But to say God has, you know, a party. You're stretching it. I think we're stretching it. Here's what I'm saying. If if you have God just, in the Old Testament, it says God turned them over. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Right? Went, went after their own hearts. And we all know the heart is desperately wicked. Who could know it? He gives us the leaders that we want. We pick them. We, we wanted a Barack Obama twice. We wanted Donald Trump. Now we want Joe Biden, I think. <laughs> right? It's like we're just getting who we get, and it's a reflection of us. Of, of us. So in that sense, I personally, my personal view on this after looking at it is, I don't think God is in it as much as we think he is. It's not to say he's hands off, but I think he's kind of turned it over to us. Okay, guys. You know, do what you want. I've got my, my people, my election are actually over here in Israel. And, and, and my word, it, it will be fulfilled in these nations, but none of them are yours. There's no scripture that can apply to the United States, right? We've got scriptures about Israel, we've got scriptures about the surrounding nations, right? That we call uh, Jordan and Egypt and Arabia and, and Iraq and Turkey and Iran and Syria and Lebanon. Yep, we got those, but that's it. So I can't say America has any kind of destiny in that way at all. All right. And then uh, let's step in it a little bit here to close it out. <laughs> as as Pastor Jake would probably agree with. Um, a word or two about false prophets. And I, cause I got a little bit of flack today for this one. Um, Number one, that what's the characteristics? How do we how do we know what they're about? Woe to you when all men speak well of you. Or so did their fathers to the false prophets. Luke six twenty six. That's Jesus himself saying that. 
So if you're a false prophet, everyone's going to be nice to you and speak well of you and say, oh, wasn't this, you know, he's always positive and, and he's always got a great word and, 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 and prosperity and blessing and peace and God's way all the time. And yes, it is all greatness and goodness. First John 4, 1, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. That's just a fact. And that's why we have to test the spirits, because why? They're going to try. They have their own spirits. They're not listening to the Holy Spirit. They've got their own. So that's characteristics we should be looking at for sure. And then we've got a lot of examples. Here's just three of them. And it's really the same thing over and over and over. Which is First Kings 22... About example one says one. Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him saying, Now listen, the words of the prophets with one accord encourage the king. If you know this story, right? All the false prophets were telling the king the same thing. The yes men, right? Over and over. But Micaiah had a different story. Please let your word be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. Be like the false prophets and speak encouragement only. Now, I'm not saying it's bad to speak encourage, encouraging word in the New Testament sense. There's no doubt that that's a good thing, okay? And we should not be looking to start a fight. You're not supposed to be tearing down people all the time. But when we're talking about the king, and that's what this is about, the king, the leadership, the one who's speaking for you, the one who's representing your nation, you better be doing it God's way and have his word in you, not who who would even dare to tell uh, a, a person who is talking to God, let your word be like one of them. It's not up to me what my word is. It's not up to me if I'm listening to the Lord. It's the Lord who's going to tell me what the word is. You can't, I'm, I can't make a judgment on that. Maybe it'll be encouraging. Maybe it won't. Not my call. Can't decide beforehand what it's going to be. That's why a lot of people, you know, God forbid you don't toe the line with a certain political party or a candidate. All of a sudden you're on the other side. Give it a rest. You know how many people I've had to, just because I tell the truth in my view about Donald Trump or about the election, all of a sudden I'm a liberal or I'm not listening to the Holy Spirit. Where is the accountability? All right, Isaiah 30, a rebellious people, lying children, children who will not hear the law of the Lord, who say to the seers, do not see. Stop at that. Stop looking at that. Stop seeing it. And to the prophets, do not prophesy to us these right things. Speak to us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Don't you see there's a difference between being right and being smooth? You can be harsh, not harsh like mean, harsh like rough around the edges. And again, that doesn't mean just because you're rough around the edges means, means you're right. It doesn't mean you're hearing from the Lord just because you feel like it. But there's a difference in the smooth, we all know the smooth talkers, right? The guys who are on TV, the fancy suits and cars, and all their prophets so and they love to be called prophet so and so, prophet so and so, prophet so and so. I don't, I don't really think a prophet of God would like to be called prophet so and so. Just a feeling. And finally, Jeremiah 23, which to me, Jeremiah has the, easiest and clearest demonstration of what false prophets say and do. Do not, this is God speaking, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. They continually say to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. And to everyone who walks according to the dictates of his own heart, they say, no evil shall come upon you. (sighs) 
uh, guys, I really don't believe that God's interested in removing or establishing any president of the United States, no matter what the party says. Even if it's a righteous platform versus unrighteous platform, that doesn't mean the man is good or righteous. We know none are righteous, right? But if they're not even repentant, what's the what's the point of a platform? It means nothing. So I don't think he cares either way. I don't think he's pulling down any president or raising up any president. I don't think he's chosen Donald Trump or Barack Obama or Joe Biden for anything. What is a king when it says he raises up kings or establishes kings? I don't think a king f- president fits into the king mold. I don't think God's cho- anointing with oil. I don't think he's sending a prophet to say, you're the leader now. I think with the elections, he's just like, well, good luck. Or, you know, I hope, you, I hope you're righteous. Righteousness exalts the nation and all that. And where are these kingdoms? I do not see for sure, definitely not where USA or any Western country is included in these kingdoms of the Bible. When it says all the earth and all the world and all these examples here, I don't see America in there. I don't think any of you see America in there. So in this, do I believe God can raise up leaders? Of course. Of course he can. It's not the question of he can. He can. He can do anything he wants. But he also has established rules like Romans 13. Look, I've already set this over you. There are nations. There are rulers of the nations. Just pay attention. Or you're going to be in trouble with them. Um, obey the laws. But you know what? At the end of the day, I'm the God of Israel. And your election is your election. So my answer to that person who I never answered is... Yes, of course, God raises up leaders in the church. And that's what he's looking for now. I really, 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 really believe that. And there's a huge, mega, mega problem with false prophets. Mega problem. We are, we have only begun to see that play out. God is not pleased. He really isn't with all these words especially around this election, which everyone is watching and everyone knows about and everyone's wanting to get notoriety and get money from it and everything else, get, get invited to speak at conferences. Um, you should know that that is not End Time Church's thing. You should know that's not my thing or Jake's thing. Taron or Chris Anderson's, we could not care less about that stuff. We want to please the Lord. We want to be in communion with him. We want to be in fellowship with you, our fellow believers. We want to worship God. We want to do it right. We want to interpret the word of God like a Berean, um, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because the times call for it. We're, there's, with, all, with, with the false prophets are everywhere, that means there's no accountability. Everyone just wants to hear something good and smooth and nice all is well, nothing's ever bad, uh, or nothing's ever negative even, that you must say the good, you must say to the king, continue good work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God's never going to judge you. Yet we have Micaiah, we have Elijah, we have John the Baptist, we have Paul, we have example after example after example of the prophetic witness to the leaders of nations. And if we are not going to do that, what are we doing? Where is our witness for the church? Why is the church weak? Why is there no power? Why is there no influence? Because we're not speaking prophetically to our leaders. That's one of the reasons. And we want to build up false words and false prophets. And with no account, who are the pastors? Where are the pastors of these guys? Where are the ones who are pulling them back? Like I said earlier today when I kind of stepped in it a little bit, I said my pastor who is watching this right now, by the way, Esther Randy would never, ever, 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 ever let me get away with some bogus public word that I put out there that didn't come true to the letter. To the letter. Because I said, I heard from God. God told me this, and that didn't happen. 
Well, it kind of happened, sort of, later, and not in a totally different way than I said, but it was kind of right. Mm -mm. Okay, no. That's not what God does. That's not how he works. You're telling me, okay, d pastors, get on that, okay? And if you're, if you're a prophet or, or you're some kind of ministry leader who doesn't think they have a pastor or need one, you better get, get right with God quick. Because we all need a shepherd here on the earth. Yes, he's the chief shepherd, but guess what? We all need that accountability, all of us. And not a bunch of yes men, okay? Not or yes ladies that tell you how good you are all the time and how perfect you are and how blessed you are and how gifted you are. We need that. We need that um, correction. We need that love. That's love. To be corrected is is to be loved. And so let's, let's, let's be about that. Okay. Um, that's that. I see a whole lot of, um, comments in the end time church side of it. I hope that's means they're not bored over there. Um, but anyway, yeah. Th so the false prophet thing really, really is, 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 uh, kind of annoying. In fact, it really, really, really ticks me off. Um, because there's no, there's no consequence. And that just hurts our witness. And that hurts Jesus. I'm sorry it does. He's just not happy with this, this situation. So here's the bottom line of this, and this is the end, okay? This is the end, really. If God spoke to someone about this election that just happened, or is still happening, if God really spoke to a person, he would have said what actually took place. Not Trump is going to win, end of word. That's not how God works. He would say, watch for this as a sign to confirm the word of the Lord. Because everyone knows there was an election. 50-50 chance, guys. God doesn't play those games. He's, he would say, on election night, it will appear as if Donald Trump will be reelected because he will be ahead in several states. But over the next two to three to four days, you will see a reversal and more votes will come in for Joe Biden to the point where they will call the election on Saturday at 1130 a.m. Eastern time. Why can't God do that? Why didn't he tell anyone that? If someone did get told that, please post it right now. Post it right now. Put it in the comments. Who said that? Who did God tell that to? I want to know. So I don't besmirch them who really heard from God because everyone else did not hear from God. Just didn't. That's not premature. That's just, hey, it's not the way you said it would happen. And you left out all these details, which would have proved you were right or that God actually spoke to you. All right, I'm done. I got the, I got the no, I got the two minute warning here. So anyway, guys, uh, let's, let's pray together and close and say, Oh God, we love you so much. I love you. I am so appreciative that you gave us your word, your ability to comprehend it, to, to, to rightly divide it, that your spirit would guide us in this. Lord, correct me and correct all of us who need it. We don't know it all. We don't know everything. Boy, you know, that's right. I certainly don't. End time church doesn't have a monopoly on anything. Um, but we know that you are in this. You've seen fit to use us over and over and over. You've brought us together for such a time as this. Whatever you'd have us do, please make it clear, plain, obvious, that you're in this. You're empowering everything that occurs. I thank you. Lead us into that perfect unity and that bond of peace and that knit our hearts together in this common goal. Because I know everyone watching has got to agree that we love your word and we love that you've spoken to us and we love your Holy Spirit. And we exalt you, Jesus, above all, above any human leader. You are the potentate. You are the sovereign. You are the king and the only king that we acknowledge in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. I stepped in a little. Stepped in yeah, a little. You clean your shoe. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I want to th uh, throw out a couple things. Um, I think uh, I, I personally have not worked through that uh, passage and uh, consideration with elections and stuff. 
to the point for me to be comfortable to say anything along those lines. I just know it is very tricky, and I, I think you did provide uh, commentary that we need to consider with that because I think very tricky when you understand election versus uh, the king aspect. And and one thing I know you, you would totally agree is is true. Um, and I would uh, to to add is even if if this is the case regarding elections, God is still sovereign over all things. Definitely, so that's within balance. You know, it doesn't mean, like you said, it, it, it very likely doesn't mean in, to the extent that you know God allowed choices to happen. He, we see that all throughout how the world works, right? God allows us to make dumb decisions, d- dumb things. I mean, you know, um, so yeah, I, but all of that in the context of sovereignty of God, and that's a very tough, uh, you know, I, I like the writers that talk about it being intention of the two that it's, you know, we, we have that we have to know it's completely true. God is sovereign. We have to also know, just understand that he gives us this opportunity to do that. And, uh, but I, and I want to, uh, Talk about the false uh, prophet thing. Uh, there's a lot of where God said a lot of things, hadn't he? Uh, it's everybody's got something. Uh, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a very tough thing. One, one thing that I'll track back a little further, because I think we have a couple things going on. I, I think, one, you, you have people outright lying. They know they're lying. <laughs> you have people who are... Uh, just confused in the the voice that they, they, they believe they're hearing. Um, but I think also one aspect is we have a very, we are always wanting to fill in the blanks that God gives us a message, gives us something to share. And we like to fill in the blanks. I'm guilty of that myself. Uh, you know, 20, Began 2012, 2014, talking about, hey, the church is going to drastically change. We need to be ready for that. Well, my fill in the blank would have been looking at the political climate. Well, this is going to be religious liberty and all that stuff. And it still may be, and it still is to a certain extent, but uh, never would have dreamed something along the lines of COVID having the impact on the church like it would. Uh, and so I think that's another aspect that we have out there that filling in the blanks, maybe something there is legitimate there, but then the filling the blanks. But I think also something we, we deal with that was not necessarily dealt with in what we read about in the, the Old Testament is God has brought us together as a body of believers. And I'm so thankful what you talked about. Where's the pastors? Where, you know, we, we need to submit ourselves to, uh, to leadership, to within a body of believers to build off each other. Uh, but we have the aspect we, we, when we read about the Holy Spirit, we read uh, John 16, John. 14, somewhere in the Bible, we read uh, that it's the, the Holy Spirit guides us into the future, which I think is an amazing thing. And so we have this at work within us, the Holy Spirit guiding us into the future. And then we actually have the the actual prophetic. Um, and I think within that guiding of the Holy Spirit, one thing I've wrestled with, and I'm going to, I'm going to close this, <laughs> putting this in overtime, I know, uh, but I I'll close this down. So, 2012, 2014, I began just being coming overwhelmed within, uh, you know, I'm pastoring. I don't have any, not focus on prophecy or anything like that. And I, I just become overwhelmed in the fact, Hey, things are going to change. We need to be ready. I mean, it's just overwhelming. Um, and I'm looking out at the political climate, 2014 into 2016. I'm writing spiritual prepper, just seeing us. This is where we're headed. I'm just feeling so strongly about that. And then we have the Trump election. And at the time I was writing for a very large news site and, uh, they, they're making a very big deal about, hey, God intervened, did a miracle and Trump being elected and, you know, God chose him special purpose, all these things. And I didn't feel at a peace, uh, with that myself. I, I just really struggled with that. Um, uh, and I just, so I left writing, uh, political stuff at that time because I just, I did not know what to say about the Trump, um, Election. I think later on, I begin to feel, you know, the best thing I could say is it was a reprieve from some of the things we're facing. Uh, so, you know, I've had this personal struggle of trying to figure out. But one of the things uh, early on, I actually watched uh, Joel Richardson's teaching on the prophecy of the United States in, in the future, uh, mm-hmm. which walks through some things that we've said on here. Uh, you know, that hey, 
nation's going to ride out of the Middle East. We, we know at the minimum it's going to, the United States is going to be peripheral. We know these things are going to happen. Uh, then he closed it with this encouragement to keep praying and had this really like uplisting encouragement deal, uh, which that type message and that truth about the United States is a very hard thing to come up with that application. My application would be, Hey, this thing's going to, this thing is crashing at some point. Let's just get ready for it. Right. Let's, uh, look for it. We know what's going to happen. And, uh, I really wrestled with that. And, uh, and so this time as I'm looking out, I've got friends, uh, yeah, friends like Christopher Manti who are, are saying, you know, very strongly, uh, that, Hey guys, we need to realize, you know, the United States is not going to be here forever. Uh, we're not guaranteed there's not going to be persecution. Uh, we need to be willing to go through these things. All very true stuff. Uh, then I have friends who are saying very encouraging things as well. Um, uh, and I, I str- struggled with that because I think in a sense, as far as the Lord leading us uh, as a body, to a certain extent, both can be true. And I, I think where we see that is in our, our, our gifting. I mean, when we talk about the body of believers, we talk about spiritual gifting. Uh, we have those who are gifted with a gift of prophecy who can tell us what's coming. We have those who are gifted in teaching and wisdom, and they can tell us what Scripture says is going to happen. Uh, but then we have those who are gifted in encouragement who are always going to bring the encouragement game, right? Um, and I think that's some of what we're seeing here. Now, again, there's definitely clearly things being said that's coming from the Lord uh, that is not describing what is happening. And I and appreciate the warnings you're giving and others. Uh, but I do think the one thing that is happening is, is this aspect of, of God as a body it's not that God's given two different messages because they're both true. Again, picking on Joel Richardson again, but he had a quote just recently that the future belongs to the intercessors. Um, and I, I think that was a very guiding thing for me uh, as a beginning. We know prophetically things are, the United States is not going to be what it is forever. We know that biblically. And those who are responsible to teach need to teach that truth. Those who have been uh, given that, you know, understanding and, and prophetically need to prepare and help prepare the church at the same time. But it's amazing in scripture. There is never once doomsday pronounced that there's not encouragement with it. Jeremiah blows me away. I mean, Jeremiah is, you know, prophesizing, you know, warning people as the, you know, Judah has fallen down and Babylon's coming. Uh, in the midst of that, even to the last minute, Jeremiah is telling the people, if you repent, uh, God's going to step in. Mm-hmm. And it, it, I mean, that just amazed me. To me, it was, it's, it's already set and, and all of these things. And I think there is this element there. I mean, even though we, where we see things in the world going, it still is this element also that we also know God can't always intervene. We are always, meant to, to pray to him. I think a lot of focus is put on, uh, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, is there 10 righteous? And, and so we, we begin to talk about, well, if there's so many righteous people, God won't do this. No, I mean, I think the real focus there was, was Abraham pleading uh, for the righteous there. And so I think we have to understand both. Again, there is clear, false prophesizing going on. Uh, I love the phrase Dr. Our, our, our Dr. Phil said, hucksters. I love that, that phrase. Absolutely. Uh, but also we, I believe we also have within the body those who saying it like it is. And then we have those who are bringing that encouragement arm and we, we've got to balance each other. Uh, and that's why it's meant to be a body. What I, I love. And you know, when we talk about spiritual gifts, we always think of like the, the thing you do well, you know, the Lord's giving you, I think of it in terms of how we're wired. I always think, I think of a term as a pastor sitting around in our, our stewardship finance team meeting and we get around the table and you've got everybody there, all these different spiritual gifts, you know, the one with ad- admin, they've created this spreadsheet that you can't understand. You know, uh, mm-hmm. you've got the one who's gifted in mercy, who's like, give everything away. You know, let's help everybody. You get, uh, those who in faith are saying, Hey, we don't need a budget. We just gonna, uh, God's going to provide everything, you know, and you got those who are, uh, I believe have the prophecy gifts are white and black. And say, you know, you can't spend out of this line out of here. Uh, this is happening. This needs a, a you know, uh, I, we have those on encouragement who are just saying, hey, we all just need to get along. You know, I think, uh, that within the body, we have these different gifts. And I think some of that is coming out 
And I think there is a truth of all of this that, hey, we know prophetically these things are going to happen. Something is going to happen in the United States. It's not always going to be like it is. We are not guaranteed. And I think many of us are feel, hey, we're headed down that road. We're close to that, all of that. But even in all of that, there is still always should be this encouragement to pray that, that the two go hand in hand. It doesn't have to come from the same person, but I think they go hand in hand. And uh, it's been something I've been dealing with and I've been working through. Uh, again, I don't want to discount the fact in the warning of, hey, people are saying some some things are just flat out lies and, and aren't are true. Uh, but also I think within this body, there may be stirrings within each of us, some saying, you know, this prophetic side, some this encouragement side. Uh, I don't think we need to, we don't need to fill in the blanks and say, well, encouragement means this president is going to be it and this is going to happen. I, I don't think that's the, to the point we need to take this, but at the same time, we need to realize, Hey, God has gifted some folks to be encouraging and to keep us, uh, you know, from not giving up and to remembering what we have in the Lord, to continue going to him in prayer, those of, of faith. But then God has also given us people who are going to take us back to the truth. No uh, doubt. And like you said, it yeah. could be the same person. A lot of times, hopefully we're all growing to that. You can be that yeah. one person can do both things. I mean, like you mentioned, Dr. Phil, um, he is that guy to be. I mean, he's wildly encouraging yeah. to so many folks too, uh, over on the app, especially. Um, I'm so thankful for him. And yet, when when that when this stuff comes up, he's like a lion. Yeah. Um. To you know, just hey, we got to be, we got to do this right. And so I appreciate that, and I hope I hope you know it, it might not come across on our public you know stuff here on uh, at ETC about um you know people come across certain ways, but we definitely need to make sure we have both of that. You know, this, we're obeying both sides of this thing. When the Lord wants us to do this, we're there. When he wants us to do that, we're there. And not say, oh, I'm not that guy. I can't do that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, some of us are definitely weaker in areas than others. And I and I don't mean to come in and, and uh, I, I, everybody needs to hear the whole message, but I, I want to share some things that been on my heart. Yeah, no doubt, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so are you going to hang around for after party? My, I'm actually being called away. Apparently I've got a situation uh, downstairs here, but. Situation. Uh, yeah. yeah let's, uh, let's after party for a bit. All right. Uh, I'll put that link in there for y'alls and uh, we'll go to work. All right. In the party. Party time. As soon as I find it. Because <laughs> they changed it recently where you need a password and all that stuff. Um, okay. I'm going to put this in our site. Sorry, YouTube. Um, Got to keep it on the down low a little bit so we don't have too many folks. That's okay. You can come to endtime.church and see what we've got. And here we go. Stand by. Y'all should know it anyway. You should have it probably uh, bookmarked. But there it is. Okay. Anyone who wants to join, go ahead and do that. Uh, and until next time, unless you don't have another sermon in you. <laughs> I did, man. What's the deal? It's, uh, <laughs> it's all good, all good, and all encouraging, no matter what, right? God's word is is always after. Uh, well, it's both, right? I mean, we, we get to know the truth, and the truth uh, oftentimes is tough. Amen. But, but yet we're free, so praise yeah. the Lord. All right, guys. Uh, until next time, the Zentine Church for Pastor Jake, Pastor Chris, uh, and for Taryn and all the rest of the folks. We love you so much, and uh, God willing, next week. 